What's up, everybody? Welcome to We Have Cool Friends, the weekly podcast where we talk to our cool friends about the cool things they're doing. I'm Greg Miller, and this is my cool friend, Devin Sawa. How you doing, Greg? I'm good. How are you, man? Oh, oh, a smattering hey. of applause from applause. those around. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Didn't see that coming. Yeah. <laughs> well, you never know with the audience, right? You, the audience being Kevin and Cool Greg. What I, they're gonna I don't know how you them. got them all in here. Now nah, you know what I mean? We pay them. That's mainly how <laughs> we get them to come back each and every perfect, day. Perfect. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me having, having me to San Francisco. This is awesome. Yeah, no problem. This so is a lot of, of fun. Of course, it's a time warp for you. We have cool friend, viewer, and or listener. Yeah. Because you're here to do a games cast with us today yes. to talk about Ancestors. Yes, which is which was a whole other fun experience. Yeah, that, yeah you can go, go back in the archives. You can find that probably yeah. six weeks ago, seven weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, but on top of that, I was like, well, if you're here, you have to do We Have Cool Friends. Yeah. This show we've been excited to do forever. And then you are the first one we've ever recorded. Yeah, that's it. That's I'm a lot nervous. of pressure. I'm nervous. Well, you can't. You, I mean, you're you, going to be the best and worst but, no matter usually what. Usually, you can go. You can go to a show and look and see what the you know what it's like, what what the tone is. But this sure. is just. Just throwing me to the wolves here. Well, I mean, you get you've followed me long enough on Twitter yeah, to understand I, I, what yeah, you're getting into, yeah. right? Because I, I mean, the, the whole reason we wanted to bring this show out, right, is that I miss interviewing people. I loved up at noon right. actually talking about other people's lives right. and stuff. And we tried to do it on Gog. It didn't work out that because people right. wanted us. And blah, blah, blah. I've talked to you about it. Yeah, I've yeah, talked yeah. to you about it too. Yeah. So here we are with a brand new show where we get Great. to interview our friends and talk to them. So I want to start with the burning question everybody probably has for you. Okay. You don't eat till five o'clock. I tried to buy him lunch today. He's like, I don't eat my first <laughs> no, meal till five p.m. Every, everyone, you know, I started this intermittent fasting thing um, and this is I just started doing it again I had done it for uh, I did a movie with Guy Pierce over the summer where I had to get big for a biker role okay um, and uh, but stayed lean looking as well so you need and to put on muscle I need to put on muscle uh -huh. and shred fat and Jeez. and I try intermittent fasting um, and I get this small little window every day to eat which is like six or seven hours where I just eat all really good stuff and then I fast for the rest of the time and the whole idea is that your body goes uh your, your body starts breaking down when, once it gets about 12 13 hours your body starts going for the fat okay it starts breaking down the fat and that's where it, where, where it gets its energy from so you're supposed to you know shred more or fat and but it works it, it, it worked, worked great well it worked it worked great for the movie i just started doing it again because it, it also helps me um watch my diet better okay you know what i mean if i'm, I'm more conscious of what you're I'm, saying all good stuff what does that mean you're like what proteins and, and yeah. greens yeah, but protein. Gummy but bears. I could still eat a little bit, bit of uh, carbs. Okay, okay. No gummy bears. No gummy bears. I mean, no. you know, having kids though, it's it's tough. You know, because there's always shit, there's, yeah, shit in the yeah, house yeah, yeah, yeah. now. Um, but yeah, just like clean food, like salads, like proteins, whatever. It and is. so from five to what? Five mm -hmm. till I go to bed. 11, okay. 11, okay. Twelve. Okay. You know? Are you are you t are you basing like I want this many calories kind of thing? Are you counting? No, it that well, way? no. I just try to get as much in as I can. Oh, okay. So just, it's non so I, I eating. Just, well, that was the thing with the guy. I want to put on weight. So as soon as and that was the, the the best thing is is breaking fast like at you know four or five o'clock in the evening because you're 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 so hungry and you're about to eat. So you're you're planning up the meal and you got oh, like sure, yeah, six yeah. eggs and salivating and whatever it is. You get this gigantic meal and then you just keep eating for that until you go to bed. You know, so, as, much, as much as you can. You want a snack? Have a snack. How long does it take to get used to? Because I, I mean, are, are you hungry now? Do you feel hunger? Do you remember hunger? Is that just a constant state now? No, my, my stomach will start growling a little bit come, yeah. come 4 o'clock. Yeah. Um, no, you get used to it after a couple of days. Sure. Because, okay. yeah, for me, it's such an energy thing where we do all the shows. And I, I notice that when I do skip lunch, yeah. I'll get to that point where I feel like my energy is dropping. Yeah, and I'm yeah, not yeah. as into it. Well, as that's the thing. Is certain people react to it differently. Like for me, come you know, 11, 12, 13 hours, I start getting a, a new energy because I'm, I'm reaching for the fat and I'm sure, burning sure. the fat. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, but some people, you know, my wife couldn't handle it very well. Yeah. You know, I just wish I had the fat to burn. I, I would do it. I just got none of the fat to burn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Don't do it, Dad. No, I, I wish I could. You, why would you I do wish it? I don't want it to break down the muscle of exactly. what I already have. Your exactly. wife couldn't do it, though? She couldn't do it. She didn't work for her. Yeah. She, was, she felt sluggish and, and slow and, and uh, it just didn't work for her. So she, gotcha. she stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for me, it worked great when okay. I was trying to gain the weight. Now, you brought up something interesting there. Okay. You're a dad. I'm a dad. You got all, you're got you health conscious. Yeah. Are you health conscious with the kids? Like, do you, are they not allowed to eat McDonald's? Are they not allowed to have the candies? No, no they're, they're uh, I mean, they've had McDonald's. Sure. They, they um, but they're very health conscious. You yeah. Know? We, we try to teach that, you know, we're not, we're not, you know, trying to be those hippie parents where everything's, you know, it's boring and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we try to teach them that, that, that if you're going to have, you know, junk food or whatever, it's a treat, you know, and, and, and you got to look after your body and, sure. and, uh, 
you know, eat healthy and, and then, you know, on the weekends when we have In-N-Out Burger or whatever it is, and you know, it's a treat. Okay, okay. So How old are the kids now? Five and three. Okay. Yeah. How's five that year old, Five year old boy. Well, five year old boy, he's a uh, he's handful. Yeah. You know, he's, you know, my mother says it's payback, um, but <laughs> he, he's, he's a handful. And yeah. the little girl who everybody says is going to change when she's a teenager, but right now she just reads and plays by herself and, yeah. you know, is quiet and sweet and likes ballet and... Um, so it's a lot of fun, man. Yeah. It's Had you always wanted to be a dad? Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm glad that I waited till I did. Yeah. Because my, my 20s were all a crazy, blurry I bet. Yeah. nightmare. Um, I think everybody's 20s are, let right? alone when they're famous Devin Sauer running through their 20s. Right. It was, so I'm glad that I waited and, and uh, they have this Devin as a dad now. Yeah. yeah. What's the What's the biggest thing you think you've, what, what's caught you the most off guard about having kids? Um, All those cliches that you hear about, like, you know, just, just there's nothing more important than your kids and yeah. and you do anything for your kids. It's all true, man. It yeah. all just, it just, it just, it's all true. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing experience. Okay. Yeah. Recommended. It's, you Very would do recommended. again. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's work, man. It's like, you know, I, I try to on Twitter, especially I try to, to, uh, be as honest as possible about the, uh, the struggles because, you know, some celebrities like, Oh my God, kids are great. And here's my beautiful kids. And, but it's not anybody that tells you that their kids are perfect is fucking lying. You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's, 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 uh, there's no perfect kids. There's, it's a struggle. It's, it's work. It's, uh, but it, but it's a payoff. You know? Yeah. It's, it's a huge payoff, but it's hard sometimes. You know? Is two the limit. Are we stopping there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got it. We got it. As soon as I heard that the second was a girl, I was like, Oh, Don't <laughs> All right, checked uh, all the boxes. It's done. done. Locked. Boy, girl, why would we go again? <laughs> um, we're done. <laughs> so, you know, you said your mom says it's payback. Yeah. Talk to me. Uh, I, I obviously know your work. Yeah. Are we close with the five year old to when you, like, for a contemporary with you that you knew you wanted to be an actor? Or how no. does that all work? No? Well, I, I got a, my, uh, Grade five, I believe, the teacher called my parents in for uh, a parent teacher, you know, yeah, yeah. the bad ones. Oh, no, not, not, not the normal scheduled not the, conference. Not the scheduled Cool, Greg knows those ones. And she suggested that uh, if I wanted to be the class clown, center of attention, that maybe I join a theater group. Okay. Um, and that's how it started. So they put mm. me in this really shitty theater. Am I allowed to swear? Am I, is that, oh, yeah. Okay. Curse away. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> so they put me in this really shitty theater group, and um, and I just fell in love with it. And that was, that, so I, it must have been what? what fifth is, grade, yeah. Fifth grade, 10, 10, 11, I somewhere in there. No, I don't that's know. the thing. Is that all, it all loses. Somewhere in there. It was, uh, no, it was like nine. Okay. It was nine. And then. So and what, then, yeah, you're 13 when you go to. When, no, that's not to right. high school, yeah, yeah seven, is that right? 13. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, so okay. it was nine. So three years, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, uh, and then I got, and then I booked a part, and there was like a an agency attached, and I booked a part on Twenty One Jump Street. Wait, so were you, were you, was this in L.A.? Did you grow up in no, L.A.? It was in, it was in Vancouver. Oh right, yeah, Canadian. Lots of, I forgot lots about of the that. Canadian yeah, yeah. beachcombers, yeah. Twenty One Jump Street, <laughs> all the good stuff, <laughs> the big ones, yeah, yeah, all the big ones. So you go right from the theater group to being on Twenty One Jump Street. I, mean, I, I was I, I stayed with theater, but then I got little small gigs in in different shows. And was um, it from the first class? You were like, I'm I'm all in. I this loved it. Doing. Yeah, and I was. I'm one of those. I just uh, uh, I just had a, a a conversation with another actor who was a child actor, and we talked about um, you know the two different types of actors, and and I got very fortunate. I was always I always wanted to be there. You know what I mean? That yeah. I was on a lot of sets where, like, especially Little Giants, where Little Giants was there was. 90% of the kids were found in malls and, and, and a lot of the kids didn't want to be there. Yeah. And I, I really always remember wanting to do, you know, I didn't want to go home at the end of the day. I wanted, I wanted to be on camera. I wanted to, you know, learn what the cameras and sure all that stuff. Well, yeah. Every, so, every part of the movie getting made, right? Yeah. I was, yeah. I was, I legitimately wanted to be doing what I was doing. That's awesome. You know. Did you look down on those other kids then? These mall kids? No, I, to be there. I, I didn't understand it back then. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't really get it. Um, yeah, I just didn't get it, you know, but they never went on. There they was that one and done. Sure. They, they didn't want to do it, so they didn't have to do it anymore. Yeah, but not yeah. you. You stuck with it. Yeah, I stuck with it. Cool. I've always wondered for child actors, like, did you like the the work? But then you have to go to school while you're on set lots of times, right? Yeah. Don't they have to have, like, a trailer yeah. and a teacher yeah. and stuff? it was hard for them. They, they had a hard time with me. And the, 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 <laughs> the, the, you don't say. <laughs> they, um, I remember I always finding a way to go have a conversation with the director whenever, because they would yell cut and I would know, it's like, oh my God, I gotta go back to school. Cause yeah. they, they had to get, they'd have to get a, a minimum of three hours a day in, um, which doesn't sound like a lot, but. It sounds terrible though. It's horrible because you have one teacher staring at you the whole time where you're, you, you don't do that in real school. No, there's, no, no, no. No, there's no way you sit for three hours consecutively and do work. So I'd always find a way whenever I, whenever I knew that like you'd hear uh, cut, uh, check the gate. I was like, okay, shit, now I gotta go back to school. So I'd find 
I, I find a way out of there. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'd, I'd come up with a conversation with the director to have, or, yeah. or I'd just disappear. Did you find yourself missing traditional school, or did you hate that too? There's Not hate, that's a wrong. You know there's I mean? certain You're, thing. Why well, I, I went back to Canada, and because like, luckily I was in, in in movies, so it was only two months. Great point. Yeah, got yeah. a couple months, two months. You know, so I got to go back and forth. But I did miss a lot. I never went to prom. I never went to a lot of school dances. I never. I had to quit basketball. I had to quit. I was I was asked to try out for the. Um, uh, under 18 uh, a provincial soccer team I didn't because it, you know I would have to make a choice acting sure. or you know try to be the first famous Canadian soccer player um, <laughs> and so luckily I made the right choice <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. um, so yeah there's, a, there's certain things that I miss but but I, I no regrets I I, yeah. I was I traveled the world I worked with people like you know Spielberg and and you know Demi Moore and all these just uh, like tons of people that, oh, yeah. that, that, were, oh, yeah. that were you know and traveled and so it's cool. Yeah. Cause I feel like the switch of going from like uh, when we're, when I was in school, right. It yeah. was very much like, I hate geometry. I'm, I'm, I, I know why geometry is important. I don't get it. I'm never going to use it where I want to go. Yeah. I just want to go write about video games. I want to go do this thing. I knew right. where I wanted to go. So like having to sit through these classes that I thought didn't matter to me, I was like, ugh. I can only imagine how much worse it would have been if it's like, cool, you're writing about video games, but also you can only work this many hours and then you've stopped and you have to go to a class where right. yeah, one person's staring at you while you do the lesson. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. Couldn't it was, it was it. tough. Yeah. It was tough. And then like, for instance, you know, there was other, you know, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, who I did school with for about three months. He loved school. Yeah. He, I mean, he, wa he, he wanted, like, he went off, he quit acting, went off to Harvard and, yeah. and now he's doing big things and, you know, whatever he's doing. Um, but, but he, he wanted, he was there to learn and he was taken and I, we were, we were in the same school room. It was him, him and I, same teacher. Yeah. And we're two different kids. Yeah. Two different kids. So I'm assuming, it was, was it like a weight off your shoulders then when you, I guess 18 or whatever, when you graduate high school? Is that 18, 18, I'm, mom was no, no longer coming to set with me. Yeah. I moved to LA, by, moved to LA by myself. At 18? 18. Oh my gosh, yeah, you yeah. wouldn't, know. you don't want to I, I survived a year before I was in every nightclub and running around, you know, I, I had like, at 19 I had Final Destination and the Stan video out and I was like. King of the it, fucking world. It was, it was, yeah. It was pretty. It was pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty crazy, and there was no cell phones back then, so no yeah. one was taking video or anything. Clubs were pretty, pretty different back then. Do you think about that now when you see this kind of crap? I dodged the like, bullet. Yeah, right. I dodged the bullet. Yeah, we talk about it all the time, you know, in the same way we were, like, like you know, me, me and my friends, we would backyard wrestle and we'd film it on the VHS tapes. Oh yeah. And if we could have. We would have uploaded it to the internet, yeah. but we couldn't figure that out. And it was too expensive when we think right. about it. And like, right. thank God. Right. Because the things we were doing and as stupid as we were and what we were saying and yeah. like what we would have never thought, oh, why, why wouldn't I put this up? And I can only imagine it, you know, trickling back to us getting in trouble at school, yeah. let alone having the world at our fingertips being a mega celebrity movie star. Yeah. yeah what yeah. actually blows up in your face and sure. goes that way. Yeah. So what you, you loved the acting. You loved the work. Did yeah. you expect fame like when you're a kid and you start off on this trajectory and you start doing it are you're just stoked to be working or are you like i want to be a movie star i want to be recognized no I, I never when i got into the when i when i started i was about 15 when when, when it all clicked like i was doing it for it was all fun up mm -hmm. until about 15 mm -hmm. like like it was all just about i was playing sure 15 i saw pulp fiction in in, oh. in, in in Savannah, Georgia, I saw it like six times in sure, the theaters. Sure. It was the first time that it clicked for me. It was like it was the first time that I that I actually and then went back and watched a whole bunch of other movies. But but it was the first time I guess that age uh, of that particular movie, those performances that I went holy, holy shit! Like there's so much more to this than I've been doing. Like yeah. right now, I've just been having fun and it's been great and all these people and these places. Paul Fiction kind of kind of switched it for me and then it, then it became have you ever have you met Tarantino and told him that uh no but I worked with uh, I just worked with uh John Travolta and I told him that nice um but uh I mean yeah I was, I mean, I'd love to work with Tarantino and tell him that but yeah uh and then you go back and you start watching Rain Man and and sure. uh and uh you know what else Awakening and all these uh, there's just like I can go to the list of you know these movies that you know De Niro and Hoffman and all these guys are doing and that's that's really why I did it there was nothing it was never about like red carpets or or flashing bulbs or you know any of that shit yeah you know or premieres it was always I always wanted to be you know I always wanted to do the scent of the woman I wanted to play that guy or yeah, play, yeah, yeah. you know play in Goodfellas or or do that you was, feel like you've done it have you have, do when you look back at your cast of characters I've done some been? I've done some things it, it started to um it started to to veer. I, I did, uh, and I was doing what I was wanted, I, what I wanted to be doing uh, when I was doing like the parts of SLC Punk and uh, Idle sure. Hands and, sure. and Fuck um, hands. those were I was I was doing it. Yeah, and then it just started. Then uh, for some reason I started doing some some shitty 
horror movies and because Final Destination was huge and all of a sudden they were throwing money at me to do these weird things and, and then I just got burnt out and took some time off. Yeah, and, you were uh, you stepped away for a little bit, right? Yeah, I stepped away for about five or six years. Is, is that just because you've been doing it for so long? I've been doing it for so long. I wasn't doing the stuff I wanted to do. I needed to, to stop. It was more important what, you know, going to the Playboy Mansion or the clubs or the, all this mm, stuff than mm. it was, the, the you know, why I got into it in the first place. Um, so I went back and uh, went back to Vancouver and, and uh, you know, just did some other stuff. Uh, and then got back into it. Now and then I ended up on a TV show for five years, Nikita, um, Nikita yeah. which was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and then after Nikita, I, I, that's when I started to, to get back into what I want to do again. And I just this uh, part that I do with uh, I, I'm in a movie with Stallone and Batista. Um, it, it, it's a bad guy role, which I'd never done really before. Um, and it was, it was starting to do the stuff that I want to do again. And then uh, the Tra Travolta movie, which is, you know, the first time Travolta's done one of these in a while, but he plays a, an obsessed fan who, huh. who uh, is in love with this B horror or B action film star, which is which who I play. Oh, really? That's and he, awesome. Yeah, he ends up kidnapping me and and uh, tying me to a bed, and, and the whole kind of uh, misery and also it's, full, it's got, it's full little, circle stand. Yeah, full circle stand. <laughs> it's got a little misery, little stand. Um, and uh, Fred Durst directs it, and he does. Uh, he brings kind of that. I don't know. He brings this really cool vibe to it. Yeah. The soundtrack's phenomenal. He's got this really eclectic uh, group of songs in it that is it's it's really cool so Turned i mean up. that's a hell of a cast like or hell of a like roster right there right fred yeah. durst you travolta yeah how does that one in particular happen is that did they come to you or did you go audition like is it blind did somebody came to your agent like i did a movie for um i did a movie with travolta years ago and uh he suggested me to to durst and uh durst was like well let's let's see what he can do yeah and so i, I went and I, I fuck i must have laid half the script down on tape i just went into a studio and yeah, just yeah. just did all these i did like most of the scenes put it on and sent it to him um and uh he he called me up and goes like, like i was waiting for days and days and finally he gives me a call and he goes hey it's fred listen i just want to tell you you know the tape was good and we really liked it and you got the bar <laughs> um, so i was like ah oh. so and then we did it man and it was like a two-hander with me and travolta and it was phenomenal that's fucking awesome yeah. it's all done like, it's all it's done all wrapped yeah, it's all wrapped and, yeah, yeah. and i I've, I've just seen it and um it's great when's it's it great. out we don't know yet they're, they're not they're going through the uh, which festivals do we gotcha. do which gotcha. uh, what what way do we go with this i know that fred wanted to do a uh a john wants to do theatrical uh fred wants to do netflix like a netflix original because sure. that's the fucking cool way to do it nowadays oh, yeah. apparently um so <laughs> apparently i don't know like, you're like i just make it and walk well, away i don't the, care what when i first came back to the when i first came back when i was doing nikita yeah they were like oh you we, they want you to audition for this uh big netflix show i'm like netflix that'll never work shows on netflix that's ridiculous <laughs> who's, who's gonna watch that oh no Devin. i know right you could have been in glow I don't know. That's, that's too new, I guess. Yeah, I would have been in Glow. I love that show. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so w w what's different this time around? You talk about, you know, you take this break. There's two sides of it then. Uh, I, I'm just, I don't know. I, I, I'm really not, uh, I'm just doing stuff that I love to do. I just, yeah. I just, I, I, you know, the biker role with Guy Pierce was just something that was, uh, you know, it was really just, just a lot of fun to do. Yeah. I was trying to do characters more too. Nikita was great. Um, I did it. I, 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 it was a long stretch. I don't know if I want to do that again. Okay. I, um, I, like I, doing serialized content, you're doing one character for, for, for a long time. Even though yeah. they, even though they listened to me whine and all of a sudden made two characters into it, <laughs> <laughs> they were listening. Um, they were trying. They right? were trying. Like, there you go. Hey. Um, it was great. I mean, if I'm going to be on a show, it's going to be a show like that. And I, you know what the thing is, is they were, they were. I was guest starring for the first season. I was guest starring for this uh, for the second season. And then I was like, come on, make me a series regular. Make me a series. And then they made me a series regular. And by season five or season four, end of season four, I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this can i get out of here <laughs> i'm gonna do this yeah. stuff but um it was a great cast and great crew and the damn good writers came off of that show so see so now let's go back to the first part of the career you say at 15 you see pulp fiction yeah and that's what Four, 14 or 15 that's some, what changes the game for you it's changed the game to completely changed the game where are we at in your career like had you done casper yet done i did uh that was that was on the movie uh now and then in savannah georgia we're shooting christina ricci and i saw it a bunch of times yeah in, in there um, so I had done, um, I mean, I'd done a bunch of TV stuff and a bunch of commercials, whatever. And, and I'd done, uh, Casper and Little Giants and, you know, this movie called Boys Club. 
and uh, and then it was now and then. Because that's, that's the crazy part is I think even back then, like to the movies that it, somebody would be like, oh, I saw it, and that's what you know uh, crystallized it for me that this is no longer fun and games. Like this yeah. is the thing I want to do. Well, if you, if, I mean, if you go back, I mean, like, you could just. I, I mean, I've just recently watched. Uh, what did I watch? I watched Wild. Well, that was after, but if you watch any of the scenes from Little Little Giants, or I'm just. Having fun, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's, I'm not taking anything serious, I mean, which is probably a good way to do it, anyway. Yeah, to be a kid in a kid movie, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, it was just, I was just having a good time. It was just, you know, a bunch of kids on set and they're eating craft service, and you know, we get to wear weird clothes and and you know, go to different places. Sure, um, that's all it was until I was 15, and then and then it was about you know, then it was about you know, and I, I worked with Harold Guskin in New York, and I wanted to train, and I wanted to learn to be better, and I wanted to be different characters, and I wanted you know, I wanted to, I want to be edgier. That was the whole thing because at that point, all those teen magazines were out. Sure, I oh, want yeah. oh, you I don't want to be on Teen Vop. No of course, way. I don't. No, that's JTT's territory. Let him have yeah, it. Yeah, well, that, they weren't going for it, and I was in it, and, and, <laughs> and so then he I was, was a bad. So boy. then, so then I wanted to rebel. Oh, I, I would do interviews for those teen magazines, and they would ask questions. I would give them the, the crazy easiest answers and they would print them like I was serious yeah um but then but then I was like okay well I, I want to be edgier and I, I would gravitate towards the stand parts and the SLC punk like mean, anything with drugs or alcohol or yeah. swearing or yeah. you know what I mean try to shake that but you couldn't I try I was trying I mean yeah. I, I guess I, I did a little bit yeah I mean, yeah but uh yeah. So when do you, do you, is it all happening like a frog in a, a pot of water where you don't notice it's happening? Or do you know all of a sudden that you do one of these flicks and it's different? Like people are stopping you in the streets or seeing you like, cause you take off obviously. Like, did you know that was happening? Did you understand it was happening? No. Uh, well, I, I uh, no, I don't know. I, I, I didn't, I was fearless back then. I didn't really think of a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? I knew that I changed <laughs> as an artist. I, 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 I I knew that I'd be K. I was an artist now. Like, yeah, that okay. was the thing. That's, that's a big that, deal. That's that was, a big step. That was, right? I was I was doing something that was it wasn't I wasn't just doing something. I was actually an artist, and I accepted that, and that that's all it was. But but the difference between me now and me then, and I wish there was a little bit more of me then and me now because yeah. back then I remember the audition for Idle Hands. I, I walked into a uh, a studio network kind of a, it was all the heads of Sony, TriStar, Columbia, all sitting yeah. there. I didn't give a fuck. I was throwing myself over a table with my hands. I was, it was, it was fearless. I was, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? And they loved yeah. it. And, and they, why would they not hire me? I, I don't know I'd, if I'd do that nowadays. Well, you would. Come on. I don't know. You know, I don't know. I, I, I just went in for a meeting where I had to do a, a, a death scene and I didn't do the full death scene. I don't know. It's just like, you just. Come on, don't cower down. I know. I know. Get on it. You know what I mean? I don't know. But that's. Crazy to think about. It's like the, I can't imagine the amount of yeah bravado you would have had and confidence. Understandably so. Yeah. Whether you're coming off all these pictures, you're doing so well that going to idle hands and jump around. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's crazy to think about what you would have been like then. Yeah. Because every kid thinks they're invincible. Yeah. Every well, teenager. I mean, right. Like the, 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 SLC, the SLC punk stuff was. I mean, that just came out of nowhere. Just sitting on the whole Jesus on the all that. It was just. You know, you're running through the sprinklers. It was just, you're just fearless back then. Yeah. You just yeah. do shit that's, that's, and who cares what anybody thinks? Hell yeah. Well, fuck yeah. That's yeah. a good way to live, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Idle Hands, is that your best work? Because I, you know, it, it changed my life. Uh, it's the reason I'm, I'll be a Devon Sawa fan until I die. Oh, that's very sweet. No problem. Um, it was definitely one of the, maybe still to this day, the, the most fun I had on a movie, just yeah. because of the cast and, and sure. uh, it was the probably the, yeah, no, it's it was yeah, it's definitely the most fun I've ever had. I think that the performance wise, this, this next one in Escape Plan is I, I, I really, I was first time playing a bad guy, and I impressed myself with how evil I got sure. um, without being too Hans Gruber. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Idle Hands is still a favorite. It's, yeah. a, it's a top shelfer for me. I, I loved it. What do you? I mean, when you get stopped, what are people stopping you for? More more likely than not. Um. Well, Casper is still, believe it or not, yeah. um, but it depends on the people, yeah. you know, if, if there's like a pothead or a, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a pothead, I know he's not coming up for Casper, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. it's definitely going to be either SLC Punk or Idle Hands. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, just, just uh, it's really, it's, it, it varies. It did varies you, all the time. do you, did you, or do you, I, and I don't think, now I think I know you pretty well, yeah. but did you, did it ever like wear on you of like, it's people coming out, like so many actors worry about getting typecast or being known for one thing, right? Yeah. And you're known for several one things, right. I feel like, right? Well, like, I, did you get pissed off when people would come up? I was only pissed off about the teen magazines. I hated, I hated those teen magazines. You have no <laughs> idea how like, like 20 years old and you're a teen heart, I hated the word heartthrob. Sure. I hated the word tiger beat. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I hated that shit. Yeah, I really and 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 um, yeah, 
No, that's the only thing. That's, that's cool. the, the only yeah, thing. like I, I, I always wonder about that of being stopped. You're like, oh yeah, I was in Idle Hands, but I was also in this. Or yeah, I know yeah. Casper, but what about this? And blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I hated it then, but now I, I've, I've, you know, that's. I think that, every, that happens with every. It seems like yeah. with every actor, right? Yeah. You, grow, you get into it eventually. Right. Like, oh, well, at least yeah. I'm known for something. Like, yeah. it's, it's better to yeah. be known for one thing to one group of people. But yeah. The, well, it just, it just was the next stepping stone. That, that got me into that, and that got me into that, and it was kind of, you know, so. Um. What? How? What is the connection? Because you bring it up, and then obviously we have questions uh, coming up eventually from the audience. Yeah. So many people want to know about the stand stuff with Eminem. Yeah, like was that another audition or this? Uh, no, that was. Uh, so I had a friend who called me one day. Uh, and he knew the. Uh, he was friends with the casting director that were looking for the stand at the part, and, yeah. and he called me up. And he says, "Listen, Stan or uh, uh, Doctor Dre is a big Final Destination fan, and uh, they want, want to know if you did the stand video." So I called my agents and my manager at the time, and I was like, "You know, Eminem's got this new music video. Uh, it's called Stan. I really like the song. It's really good." And yeah. They're like, "No, absolutely not. You're not doing it." It's like you can't do. You know, Eminem. You know, one hit wonder. He's got one. <laughs> uh, they they really were they were really pushing me to not do it, and. Um, and I did it anyways, and uh, I went into the studio, I met Eminem, and uh, met Dr. Dre, and then... Were they on set while you shot, or were they, you just met them like... Eminem was there for half a day. Okay. Um, Dre was a co-director yeah. on it. Okay. Um, and it, that's another, one of the one of the coolest things, I, experiences I've ever been, just because like I grew up listening to Dr. Dre, and sure. that was my, that was my uh, teenage directing years. directing you or whatever. And that's now he's directing insane. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember walking down this dark, this dark street with Dre and his posse, and just me, and I was like, this is the fucking coolest thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I felt like- I can, I, Oh yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. Like Dr. Dre and his posse and, and me. In a dark street, and like that's what I'm talking about. I'm it's invincible. Like, exactly. That yeah. was when you, I mean, you were on top of the world, right? Yeah. You mentioned it was right after Final Destination. Yeah. Idle Hands has happened. SLC Punk has happened. Like everybody fucking knows Devin Sawa. Yeah. Like it, that's the power you must have wielded in these clubs. Yeah. Well, we don't get in that. Yeah. No. 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 no, 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 Oh really? They didn't tell me that. They 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 gave me the lyrics. I don't know if they knew, but they gave me the lyrics on the day. Yeah. And they told me, well, you know, by the way, you're gonna lip sync this. And they, here's three verses of of a, of a rap song, white <laughs> white boy from Canada. Yeah. <laughs> no rhythm. <laughs> no with no rhythm. That was actually that was actually one of Dre's uh, notes. One of his first notes. He ran from behind the camera. He goes, this time I need to try with a little more rhythm. I was like, all right, cool. But uh, explain rhythm to me. <laughs> explain rhythm to me. <laughs> what do you mean? Apparently, I was uh, apparently I, I I thought I was on, but apparently I was like a, I was like a smidget off. Yeah, in my lip syncing. And then that'll, that'll get you. That'll, that'll get, get you every you. time. So then they said, okay, well, we just want you to get key words like you're like you're like you're writing the letter, and every once in a while, I'll look up and say one of the lines. It's like, all right, so. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Little... So now you talked about uh, we or we mentioned Final Destination. When you're making Final Destination, do you yeah. realize like this thing's gonna be the fucking shit? No, everyone's gonna love this. Not thing. at all. It's gonna launch a series forever. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. No, I didn't. Um, uh, I mean, I knew it was good. Yeah. yeah. I, I knew. I knew when when we did the first of all, you don't see things like we. I didn't see what was going on with the bus thing. That you don't get to see that. That's all done in the editing room. Yeah. yeah. And those guys are genius. The train sequence was done with a huge mirror. Um, they don't really tell you this stuff. Um, it, it just felt like another, it felt like an, another high school because there was a bunch of really pretty actors yeah. on there. Um, Sean William Scott, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we, we sort of not pretty. Maybe the hot, the hot no, young, I, no, hot no, young. No, no, no. One, one guy was from Dawson's Creek. Uh, Sean William Scott from American Pie was like the hot young. Sure. You know. And uh, but you didn't. You, I, we didn't know what the, the, those guys, Glenn Morgan, or yeah, Glenn Morgan and James Wong are, are genius. I mean, what they did. And when we when I first, I was blown away when I first saw the film because I didn't see that on the set while we were shooting. Right. You didn't see a lot of that stuff. That was all done, you know, in the editing room. Of and, course, and, yeah. For and, a in their like mind that, right? before, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. But uh, but yeah, turned out phenomenal. Hell yeah. yeah. And then so, like, but the, then you never come back. You what never come hell? back. What the fuck, man. That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> we got plenty of time. Well, and how much you want to get into it or don't? No, I'll get into it. Why not? I mean, it's it's. Because I'm, sure, I'm sure you could. The reason uh, I'm talking on the thread is that I, I like, was I was a bit of a pain in the ass on Final Destination. I was I was uh, um, that was that was after Idle Hands was my last movie that I did as a, a responsible young adult. Oh, okay, uh, and then I started clubbing and whatnot, and and for me it was I did Final Destination, and and uh, I was partying a little bit too hard. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, that was it. And so after that movie was when I was told, you know, maybe you should take some time and, and, uh, figure things out. Yeah. Um, 
Were and, you receptive to that at the time? Yeah, and, okay. and, and I really, I was, I and I did a couple movies after, even though I, you know, they they told me that I still did a couple more movies. Well, that's because that was the thread I was talking about. Because you talked about the fact after Final Destination, you did some shitty horror movies. Well, I did, I did Slackers and and. Great um, movie whatever and then uh, <laughs> and then and then I did a, and then it started going down and I did a couple of other uh, things and then I went away for five or six years and I didn't think I, I didn't really think I didn't want to come back I was done I yeah. worked since I was nine ten yeah. right um, and uh, I got sober and I got and I changed my life and I met my wife and and uh, we went off to Southeast Asia and we came back and I was in the real estate business things were going really really good and then uh, some agent at, at my agency didn't get the memo that I wasn't Acting anymore? <laughs> Wait, we still represent Devin Sock. Well, no, I got, I'm I, sending him out on so, stuff, so, guys. So I'm out checking the regular mail, right? <laughs> and you're, you're in your bathrobe, you're in your coffee. <laughs> pretty much whatever I was wearing. So I'm checking the regular mail, and in there is is an old like a script, like a like a paper yeah, script yeah, yeah. in an envelope, and uh, with a cover sheet. This it was for the Mark Wahlberg movie, the video game uh, that uh, I think who uh, Mark Wahlberg video game uh, 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 Max Payne. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, so it was an yeah, addition yeah. for for Max Payne, which I don't know who got the the part. Uh, uh, anyways, nobody, nobody saw Max Payne, so it's fine. So good. <laughs> this, this all happens for a reason, right? Yeah. Anyways, so I auditioned for it. The casting director they, they loved that I was in I was in the running for it, and the casting director told me, you know, my agency my agency had a new manager, and all of a sudden I'm back in L.A. and acting again. But I realized really quickly it's what that I missed it, that I really, yeah. you know, I didn't, I, I'd gone back to Vancouver and I bought some old, uh, old buildings and, um, started to fix them up. I was hauling drywall up the stairs and, and doing a lot of the stuff myself. And it was, it was fun, but, but I'd missed, sure. you know, I missed being uh, an artist. And so I think it was that it, when they sent me that edition, I think it was in the little, I went to this place casting workbook in the little studio with this little acting coach guy or guy that reads off camera. And I realized right there, holy shit, I missed this. Yeah. Um, and uh, it didn't take a lot to convince me to, to come back. And I came back and, and uh, I was, I was, uh, I was You're back? a new guy. And uh, you know, I've, I ran into the, I first, I had a meeting with the, with the final destination guys and you know, kind of, apologize and that's you know. awesome yeah it's great i mean that's and, awesome yeah. I, I mean that and that's the i mean to have the the moral fiber the character right to be like i sucked and yeah hey, no, I, I stepped sorry. up i stepped up and said listen i was i was uh i was you know by the age of 21 22 i was uh i was a pain in the ass I sure was, i was um you know i had a problem and and, and uh just needed to fix it, and and so uh, I assume and they were receptive to that. They were very receptive. To yeah, that. I did it. I did a uh, a short with one of the uh, with one of the creators, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, it's funny how everybody loves to they, they love a, a comeback story. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean, oh, yeah. at the beginning, the, some of the doors were closed. You know, people were like, "Evan, oh my god, I heard stories about that," but you know, eventually, it was it was. Uh, it was uh, doors were open and people love a comeback story, but now it's been like you know it's been a while. Now and, you're uh, back. <laughs> now, now I'm back. I got I some got movies Dennis coming Tyler's out here again. I'm working with Stallone. Come on. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. At the top of the pile. That's all happening. <laughs> what did uh, how? Did, and I, may, I might be jumping to a conclusion here. Yeah. How did your wife feel about you coming back? Because she didn't know Devin Sow the actor, right? She no, she didn't. Devin Sow the no, drywall she, hauler. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be yeah. <laughs> that, that's not what I was doing. <laughs> um. No, she didn't know that guy, and, and she uh, she was in the film business as well as a producer. Oh. She, she was uh, producing like Canadian uh, uh, television. Like she was doing the, she's gonna kill me for this, but she was doing the knockoff television. Like she was doing Canada Biggest Loser, Canada gotcha. uh, uh, Bachelor, Canada. You know what I mean? Because we we not we who wants steal. to be a loony air? We, we, we <laughs> <laughs> zing zing gotcha Canada. <laughs> um, yeah, she was doing all that, and uh, and I came down here on my own a little bit first, and you know tested the water. And then as it as it started to pick up, she quit because we were talking about starting a family anyway. Sure. She, she she came down. She became an American citizen. Awesome. We had two American kids. Yeah. Um, now we're just a happy American family. Yeah. A yeah, bunch of immigrants. Yeah, I was uh, gonna say the American flag out there. Yeah. Saluting every day, <laughs> exactly. right? Just being all set to go into and stuff. We know more about the Constitution than ninety nine percent of oh, Americans. Yes. Oh yes, 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 yes. Um, when my Canadian wife asked me questions about America, and I'm yeah. like. I don't know why that <laughs> exactly. happens or what's happening. Around. How many states? <laughs> um, no, yeah, she came down. She and and we had kids, and she's doing her thing, and she's thinking about going back to work now that they're in school, and you know, yeah. So, was there ever a fear on your part or apprehension about coming back because you were afraid you'd go back to being old no, Devin? No, I I had no fear of going back to old Devin. Uh, that's 
I mean, I'm, I'm 13 years sober and um, that's, that's a huge, thank you. That's a huge thing. What I, I, the only fear I had coming back was those doors that were closed. Sure. And I, I, would, I doubted that they would ever open again and I doubted that people would, would want to give me a second chance, but they did and it was, it was, and now the older I get, that little window of, of 19 to 24 oh, yeah, yeah. is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Who can remember? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know. You know. So when you're looking for future projects, how far away are we, you think, from the Idle Hands reboot, where you'll be the dad now we're, or whatever? We're, and you're we're almost, we're, we're very close to recouping the budget of the first one. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are about five years away. <laughs> we're waiting for it to hit India, and maybe we get a couple more million there. Sure, yeah. Was it a huge bomb? I don't even remember. It, it, uh, yeah. I it, no, it wasn't a huge bomb. I mean, it. It's got it's definitely got a cult uh, following. Oh, yeah, totally. Um, they pulled it. You remember that it happened? Uh, the it came out the weekend after Columbine. So Columbine oh. happened, and then the next. So we, we were about to go to the premiere. The premiere got pulled, and the whole because oh, wow. it basically yeah. our movie happens in a high school, and there's yeah, a bunch of murders. I never thought about that. Yeah, so no, we got I pulled. Uh, we got pulled. For, they didn't play in three different states. I'm sure Colorado was one of them. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so. yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Because that's the thing is like for me, Idle Hands was such a. Got it from Blockbuster, right? And ha it would rent it over and over until I finally, when I got the PlayStation 2, yeah. got the DVD, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm listening to the commentary tracks and looking at all yeah. this stuff. Yeah, but I didn't realize there was controversy around it. It, it, it was, it was a, we, we had a different director when we first started the film. Um, and then uh, he was a, he came from, he was Tim Burton's guy. And it had a very comic Tim Burton feel, which is what, how I got on the film. Like yeah. I, I brought the comedy too. And then they got rid of him. And I, I think that this, some of the studio wanted, that, cause there was, you know, you know I, I know what you did last summer and screen yeah, and yeah, all course, that course, shit. So they were like, whoa, whoa, hey guys, we can't do comedy. This we know. And they brought in this other director and, and he's great, but I don't think he and I, he was, he was pushing for that. I know what you did last summer kind of Horrible, and I and I was Jim Carrey was like my idol, and I wanted totally. to, to you know, especially yeah, you I have wanted to, you to, have to I wanted to Bruce Campbell myself all around the the studio every day, and so that was the only thing that was kind of um, it didn't work so well together. As he and I, we we kind of butt heads a little bit, yeah, um, and it's 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 shitty. I wonder what you know if, if I went completely my way or if he went completely his way. I wonder what the film would be be like but do you feel i mean you talk about final destination you don't know what it looks like till you're in the theater and stuff yeah. does this kind of thing happen often where you you get hired or you pitch yourself or audition one way you get there the film's completely different and then you're kind of just lost out there no final destination was a different was a different beast final destination those those guys they came from x files um and and they're very 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 smart guys they're like they're really smart dudes and the wheels are always turning and they don't need to tell people shit they just you just <laughs> we you know we're doing there's it. your mark here's your line don't change them and just say them and, and we'll figure it out and that that's kind of like they're just they're just they're very experienced but guys. in general for your career do you does that happen often where what you audition for isn't what you actually what the movie or sometimes, show becomes sometimes yeah. sometimes um yeah you you could usually get a good feel like if you're auditioning or meeting and you talking to the director producers they usually tell you and you get you know you usually get a good feel this episode of we have cool friends is brought to you by me undies and hymns let's start with hymns 66 percent of men start to lose their hair by the age 35 and once you start to notice thinning hair it can be too late that's why there's a solution for hymns.com a one-stop shop for hair loss skin care sexual wellness and more for men you've heard us talk about hymns and how they're helping nick and andy what's that you haven't well on the other side of the wall nick and andy are over there they noticed their hair was thinning so they hit up for hims.com once there they got to talk to a doctor they sent in some photos they went back and forth about what they should be using uh the doctor prescribed them well-known generic uh, equivalents to the brands that you would usually use and saved them a ton of money uh if you didn't know thanks to science baldness can be optional hims is helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed physicians and fda approved products to help treat hair loss there's no snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements these are prescription solutions solutions backed by science no more awkward in-person doctor visits you get to go online no more pharmacy lines they send it right to you for hymns connects you with real doctors online which could save you hours plus it's completely confidential and discreet unless you're nick and andy on the other side and then i talk about it here on the show you answer a few quick questions and a doctor reviews it and if they determine it's right for you they'll prescribe you medication to treat hair loss and have it shipped directly to your door 
Order now. My listeners can get started with the Hymns Complete Hair Kit for just $5 today, right now while supplies last and subject to a doctor's approval. See the website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went to a doctor or a pharmacy somewhere else. Go to 4 slash KFMS. That is F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash KFMS. 4 slash KFMS. Up next, you know it, me undies. How do I know it? I'm wearing them right now. Look at them right there. Me undies every day. I threw away all my other underwear when I started getting me undies, and I had to pay for them all the time. You probably spend about 90% of your life in underwear, so don't you think it's you, that you owe it to yourself to make the underwear you're wearing the best undies in town? That's why I, Greg Miller, only wear me undies. You know it. You see them. I show them all the time. Kev, you wearing your me undies? Yeah. That's what I like to hear. These undies are so soft, they make Bob Ross's voice sound like Gilbert Godfrey. That's ad copy. I wouldn't be mean to Gilbert like that. Aladdin was dope. Me undies uses the coveted micromodal fabric, which is three times softer than cotton. Uh, men can now try the new boxer brief with fly, which is the same great cut as the boxer brief but with an added option for guys who prefer to go through the gate rather than over the fence. MeUndies is also the go-to for the softest loungewear on the planet. Hang out in the super comfy lounge pants and onesies. Yes, MeUndies me undies makes onesies and they're incredible. I also know this. I have two of them. How do I, why do I have two? Me and my wife warm around Christmas when we were hanging out of the house. It was great. MeUndies has a great offer for my listeners. Any first-time purchasers can get over at MeUndies.com, 15% off and free shipping. You get 15% off the pair of the most comfortable underwear you'll ever put on. Uh, right now, you can go get your 15% off, your first pair, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee at MeUndies.com slash morning. That's MeUndies.com slash morning. Be like Greg and Kevin. Get in our underwear. Wait, what? Okay. Oh. The fuel sticks. You know yeah. what he's going to do. Okay. Some, sometimes. Sometimes. Usually. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you're hauling drywall again. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't hauling drywall. Listen, it's, there's nothing to be ashamed <laughs> There's nothing wrong with hauling drywall. <laughs> Listen, I bought this little heritage building, and I did a lot of work on it on my own. But yes, I was. I guess I was hauling d- drywall. And it's a shitty job. There's no elevator in this building. No, no. Heritage building's <laughs> not going to have that. No, no, no. No. Do you still own the building, or do you sell the building? No. So here, it's very sad, because we, we, we went in there. There's two, two, two stories. First right of all, on. I bought the building and it was falling apart, right? And yeah. and and uh, and and so we slowly um, had tenants moving out. And as as they would move out, we'd go in and we'd gut the units and we'd we'd uh, fix them up. And you know, we we did the electrical and the plumbing and we did some of the facade and we put plants and we did the whole. You know what I mean? We, yeah, oh, we, yeah. We, we lipstick on a pig. We we brought it back to life. Um, <laughs> but uh, I remember that there, the People magazine came out one time. Uh, for the birth of our our first son, and I guess one of the tenants wrote uh, oh, in the God. comment section that that she lived on, in my building and that that I had mice and I wouldn't get rid of oh, the God, the dude. mice for yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. the building had mice when we got we bought the building the building definitely had mice when we got there <laughs> trust me it had it now, like, listen the mice were there before we it, got it there. had mice it had crackheads it had like you know what I mean we, yeah we, oh, yeah. So I mean, I'm, I feel bad that she had to deal with, it, but we we got we. There's no mice in that building when we left. It, yeah, it was it was we fixed it up. It was we put a lot of love. In. We didn't make a lot of money, but we put a lot of love in there. And then some guy bought it, and now it's sad because I drive past it all the time, and he's just let it go to shit. It's back to be a mice village. Plants are all dead. The the it's just it's no good. No, good. it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. What is that like? That People <laughs> Magazine. I see how many times he says dry, hauling drywall. <laughs> People Magazine comes out to cover the birth of your child because yeah. you are an international celebrity. And yeah. then in the comments is a tenant talking about this, like, such a micro issue for them, which is a huge issue well, for it's them. It's a huge like, issue. There's, no one should have to live with mice. Yeah. And, and, and if someone, like, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, but it's it's... There's nothing you can do. I mean, I, I, you know, hopefully no one read it. Like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, no, no one believes the comments. Like, sure. Yeah, right, lady. Devin Sow is your landlord. Get out of here. Yeah. Saw him high hauling drywall the other day. He doesn't own a building. Uh, <laughs> he was at Home Depot hauling drywall. <laughs> He's already loading up his drywall. <laughs> How do yeah. you deal with it now that, like, you're Devin Sawa and you're doing all this work still? You're doing, you're doing this movie with Stallone, right? You're working with John Travolta. You know, I, uh, before we go out about this dry, dry, haul, uh, hauling drywall, I still have a, a house that it was the first house we live in. I still, and I have tenants in there, and they're very nice people, and I still clean the gutters. And, and I and believe it. I would haul drywall, damn it. Yeah, you're a down to earth dude. I get it. But how do you deal with the fact that, like, I mean, for us on social media and Twitter, right? Like, yeah. we're internet famous. Nobody cares. So right. it's like when people want to yell at me about my Uncharted review, great, whatever. Right. For you, I feel like 
Dale, I see you engage with people who are mean on Twitter. Yeah, I shouldn't do that. You shouldn't. I, I definitely don't no, do I'm that. Not. That's not the way to really do no, it. But I'm on not. top of that, like, you're Devin Sawa. I feel like I've seen you make comments or you or respond to us, and people are always like, holy shit, why is the idle hands guy talking to you? And it's like, wait, why are you calling him the idle hands guy? Right. Like, he's he's a man who has right, a life right. and buildings he owns that he does a whole bunch of things for because right. he's a blue collar dude. Oh, see, I, I could take that. That would, that would be an okay, the idle hands guy or yeah, something. Yeah. I know that people are going to be dicks, <clears throat> but there's certain ones that are like, why would you say that? And I, yeah. and I should just ignore him or block him or whatever. But it's just so much fun to just <laughs> go, <laughs> go at it with them. No, don't to their level, I, I, know, I know it's going to haunt me in like the future. Like, the future, like 10 years from now, it's like, I, I would be on some show and they'll be like, did you call this person a, you know, whatever? And you're like, no. And then they show up. you like, fuck, I did. I did call him that. That's on me. Yeah. Because <laughs> I see you get into it. I and know. I also, and it's also that weird thing of just like, People have their image of you, right? Yeah. And I feel like if they haven't kept up with Nikita or they haven't kept up with anything, yeah. it's like, oh, Devin Sawa's still doing stuff. Like, well, no, yeah, he's doing yeah. a ton of things. He's all over the place. Right. Yeah. I don't like to do a lot of press either. I, I really, I really, I don't, you know, I don't like to do a lot of press. Thanks for so. doing this then, huh? Coming Hopefully. out of here. Mm -hmm. Montreal, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, put him on. we got him in Montreal to play a video no, game and I, that got him here. Yeah. I knew that, that well, I, I have comfortable talking to you. Yeah, like for, I feel like well, that uh, leads me to an interesting segment of the show of We Have Cool Friends called The Friend Zone. This, of course, is where you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny. Ask us questions. We will bring them up here to whoever's on the show. Uh, I went over there today. Alex Kreps writes in and says, what kind of threats is Greg made towards you or your loved ones in order to get you on the show? You are a, you're a legitimate friend. We've talked. We hang out on Twitter all the yeah. time. You're an Internet friend like yes. everybody else. I because we all travel and do too much. Right. I don't remember how. We moved from I like Devin Sawa movies to oh I DM Devin Sawa quite a bit and we just talk about video games. And well, there was some there was some sort of the last place you were at uh, IGN. Uh, the, some of the like uh, uh, some of the guys over there Gold, Goldman and and oh yeah uh, yeah yeah, uh, yeah, yeah that, that's yeah. kind of the uh, that was kind of is the, that where it started yeah. I couldn't remember when this came up and I yeah, didn't know if it was a couple of the writers Terry Matlis and yep. they, and then th there was all kind of you know okay it was I, just I, and I just I just wanted to be in your guys's posse sure. And uh, so, you know. Because that was the thing. Yeah, I remember. That's right. It was Eric Goldman, wasn't it? Yeah. IGN TV back in the day that yeah. got us all hooked up because he was a huge Nikita fan. Now it's all yes, coming back was, to me. He came up there all the time. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I think it, I must have been trying to I must have been trying to pitch you on up at noon back in the day. Maybe. The old talk show over there. But yeah, now at, it's just uh, like. At the Beverly Hills offices? No, well, that's where they were. I was always up in SF. But okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was always trying to get you. I remember that it just all of a sudden just became normal that Devin Sow was right. a friend. Well, you asked me to come up a couple times to San Francisco, but I just had nothing to talk about at that time. Sure, was, sure. And, and now now there's stuff to, you know. Exactly, yeah. Stuff video to, games. Stuff you have video games to come up and talk about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's funny how it happens of like, I, I didn't expect it ever when I was like, I want to write about video games when I grow up, right? I never thought that would lead to the fact that somehow I'd be sitting with Devin Sawa. To, you know what I mean? And they wouldn't be, it would just be my friend Devin. It wouldn't even be, I'm here to strictly talk about Idle Hands and how I watched every Halloween and blah, blah, blah. Like, right. you know, Do you? Yeah, for a long time we did that. Yeah, oh, me and nice. my friends would get together on Halloween and watch Idle Hands. Right, it's a great one. Great one. Yeah, a lot of the, 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 I, you can. We can call my friend Poe if you want right now. No, no. Hey, one of his favorite. <laughs> one of his favorite moments is a line I ripped out of Idle Hands. Where you remember when? Uh, and I'm sure you remember the movie word for word. But it's when uh, uh, Penub and Seth Green are trying to leave the house, and Penub's like, "Man, we should clean this place up." And Seth Green's like, "Yeah, while we're at it, why don't we just clean the whole fucking house? <laughs> this ain't our mess." And walks out. And we're at a Burger King, and, I, and Poe's like, "Should we pick this up?" And I'm like, "Yeah, while we're at it, why don't we just clean the whole fucking?" Burger King in our house. We laugh. You know, Seth, Seth came up with a lot of that stuff. He, he, he's one of the still to this day one of the him and and Jason Schwartzman are like that. You just you, you'd be crying all day long. They're just so they're so damn funny. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still like keep in touch? I mean, I, that's a via, weird thing via Twitter with, with right. Seth. Um, I haven't seen Jason Schwartzman in a lot of years. Sure. Yeah. I was because I would imagine. Yeah, I, I think everybody wants to imagine, and like, even when people talk about it on a press tour, right? Of like, oh, we were family on set, right? Yeah. Like when the job's over, it's back to your real family. Usually, and your real there's, life. A, there's a few that I've stayed in touch with, you know, over the years. But uh, yeah, usually it's like, oh, I love you. I'll see you next week, and then you never talk again. Of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. we'll I'll never forget this summer together. <laughs> Every summer, let's come back together and yeah, make this exactly. thing happen. Uh, the friend zone is not just people on Patreon. It is people in the kind of funny office. A young boy named Tim Gettys is stepping up to the shock mic today. Tim, what would you like to talk to my friend Devin about? I got I got two questions. Uh oh, you're already you're already laughing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question number one. Yeah. When it comes to Casper, a spirited beginning, and Casper meets Wendy, featuring Hillary Duff, was there ever any talk of you reprising your role as the titular Casper? Okay, so uh, I mean, that's interesting. So I, I never played the voice of Casper. 
I, I was I, you were I, just the fake. Then we became just, a real boy. And the reason I want to bring this up is because I I, I told I, I literally this is this other kid and he for two two or three months he shot the Casper movie. He, he did the voice. He, he sat behind. Well, they you know they had a like green sock or something. <laughs> Garbage bag <laughs> on his stick. <laughs> Who knows? And, and he did the voice and he did it very well. And he did all the other voices for all the other movies and the cartoons and whatnot. And 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 three months into production of Casper, they decided they wanted to shoot a. a uh, an alternate ending to Casper where maybe he comes back to life and and so they so they wrote this little thing up they did it he's like a year younger than Christina at the time he was shorter he wasn't playing Casper that yeah, was yeah. that's the only reason that he he didn't get it so they did an open nation uh, uh, search for it I put myself on VHS tape sent it down there and it ended up being on the right desk at the right time I got it blah 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 um, so I, and I was there for a day or a day and a half or something like that. Sure. For the, so he, that other kid did all the other work. And I told people for years, this, all the team magazines, even though the studio wanted me to go there, he's very upset about me taking to this day, to this, to this day. <laughs> he, this he, poor guy. <laughs> he, 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 you know what? He has every right to, cause like whenever someone thinks about Casper, that movie, I get, I get the credit and he did, you know, the work. Um, so he got a hold of me on Twitter <laughs> Dude, <whoa. laughs> oh my Some god! Casper beef going oh my on. god! He got, he got a hold of me on Twitter, and he he. Oh, I can't remember. There was a was this public or your DM? Public. Oh lord! Yeah, no, because like an article came out about ghost fight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the article came out about Casper, or whatever, and he he wrote uh, but a Casper. I joked about a Casper Casper sequel, and it went viral. And one of the you know us or people yeah, or somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. picked it up. Devin Sal was ready for a Casper Re Casper. reboot. So yeah. he tweets me, "What? Where you come in for the?" last day and do your part and I do all the hard work I'm like ooh and, <laughs> you're like too real and then, he, and then he hits me with this by the way I dubbed your voice I'm like what so apparently he's saying that the I, I can I keep you is his voice and he dubbed it and you didn't even realize that I, I, I still to this day don't know whether he's lying <laughs> Whether, whether for all this time, <laughs> that's his voice. Damn, what a, what, a, what a way to cut, like not even cut you at the moment. Oh, yeah. like, it's like you're looking back through all the years. Like yeah. I nailed that line. <laughs> I nailed it. Like, watch it. I don't, I've never even seen the rest of the movie. I just fast forward to that one little. <laughs> Stop in the Dan Aykroyd section. So, then keep going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Gotta see Ghostbusters. But anyways, he, he put in all the work and, uh, and, and what was the question? Uh, that that was it. That was it. Oh, the, the second question. Oh, you the, the sequels. I I never. I yeah. He, he did all the work on. Those I just two. wanted to reference. Right. Casper meets one. There you go. Um, but uh, the second the second question I got is Eminem Stan. Obviously yeah. one of the most iconic. Rap also songs not my voice of all time. I was. I'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Um, that would be awesome if Eminem's like what? See, <laughs> I did voice and Stan too. But it's it's crazy that you are you played Stan, yeah. which now is in the dictionary. Yeah. As a word in the Oxford Dictionary, Stan is a word is yeah. it really yeah, yeah. It's, it's a definition for being like an obsessed fan is yeah. That yeah 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 oh, wow. when when did that kind of come back into relevance for you has, has stan always kind of been a thing like for the people uh, reference with you the, when it, my brother sent me the article on how it became it was in the dictionary and i didn't know i didn't know people were really using it and i don't think people that you were using it really knew uh, that's the, that was the, that's what i heard is that a lot of these young kids were using oh, they it have no they idea, had probably. no idea where it came from it was like it was a word that like had you know, snowballed so much that the majority of people are using it, the people, the type of people that were using it, the young kids, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Millennials. 14 to 20 something. I don't Avocado know. Toast I had people. no idea where it was from. So, yeah. Yeah. Crazy but it's, stuff, it's, man. it's, it, yeah, there you go. It's a, it's a, it's a word in the dictionary. <laughs> Your cultural impact cannot be go. denied. Pop and I gotta say, loved you and idle hands. Never Thank you, forget. sir. Yeah, Thank never you. forget. No, we're gonna make it happen. We're gonna bring it back. Don't worry about Thank that. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two yeah. Well, okay, yeah, we could call it that. Uh, who's next in the friend zone? Oh, it's Nick Scarpino, yeah, producer slash maybe, seducer. Well, I just kind of pushed my way. Yeah, no, in. Cool Greg was waiting a long time, but it's cool. Don't worry. The, oh, Cool Greg, get in here. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, fine. Look, so you want to talk about movies that deserve a sequel? Here we okay. go. We gotta talk about Slackers. Okay. Yes, sir. I complimented Slackers. He's like, yeah, whatever. Also, Kept going. also Big still, was in it. still trying to recoup the budget. <laughs> 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 Which I just don't get. I watched this movie. And I'm like, this. I think this is one of those movies that was just so. Underrated yeah, and just I think not so too. people just didn't get it at the time. Yeah, it reminds like, me of a PCU. It it's a PCU. It's a darker PCU. And sure. it was, I thought. It was oh, I meant like the, the thing. Like if you know slackers, oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. PCU. You fucking love. Them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I, just, I mean, like. I don't know, man. Just kudos to you on that one. Uh, Jamie King, uh, she's in the Stallone movie too from from Slackers. Oh yeah, that's right. Girl. She's she's the uh, 
She's she was my love interest in Slackers and is Stallone's love interest in the movie I just did. Wow. Yeah. So you're saying this is happening in the Slackers cinematic universe. This yeah. Stallone yeah. Movie. It's, <laughs> it's the Slacker come. sequel you you, you get. Oh you god, go. I wanted it to be. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to get, give you kudos for that because I know you. that's one of those that a lot of people. There's some pretty diehard fans out there. Yeah, it was also them. a lot of fun to shoot that. I one. just think it was such a fun like like kind of genius movie that was very yeah. very misunderstood for yeah, its time. Yeah, I think so too. And and a great. I mean, Siegel and Schwartzman. Dude, great cast. Yeah. Great concept. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's it. That is all. Thank wow. You. I really thought you were going to have some weird kickboxing MMA diet question. We, we did. We, well, well, we talked an about hour that before. Back there. Yeah, but I know yeah. when it's not cameras on, did it really happen? That's the big thing. You can't, <laughs> well, we got we got all the good stuff out back there. And now you, you guys really want us to talk, talk about, about kickboxing for just, now? I'm just saying what I expected him. Oh. I didn't expect the left field slash. <laughs> did you guys talk about kickboxing? Yeah, did you no, yeah, we didn't so, talk about it at all. So a lot of little people don't know that about you necessarily, That, but you are a very pretty. Pretty well uh, yeah. versed kickboxer, like Muay well, kickboxer. I'm, I mean, a world champion, right? I'm Gold a uh, I'm a high level hobbyist. There you go. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> that um, makes sense. Yeah, I've, I've been. I started doing it. I started boxing when I was when I was hauling drywall. That was sure. part of my sure. training. Of course, yeah. I, if you can haul, that's why it, I was if doing you can it. Kick this down. You can oh, carry drywall. I have the tiger. I have the tiger. Oh, it's on fire. Um, yeah, no. I, 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 I got I got sober and then I and then I, 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 I like two weeks later went to box to a boxing gym mm -hmm. and started boxing for a few years and then went to Thailand with my wife Southeast Asian. I tried the like the touristy uh, Muay Thai. Uh, uh, stuff over there, and I came back, and everyone back to boxing. I went right back into um, Muay Thai, and so yeah, you never went back to boxing. Never went back to boxing. I mean, you, you kind of got it in Muay Thai, but yeah. I just liked kicking shit. Like What's kicking the experience bags. of uh, Muay Thai a little bit more intense out in, in actual Thailand than it is here? I I, I want to go back again and do it now that I like when I did it, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew I loved it. You know what I mean? I was yeah. literally like those, those side of the freeway, uh, uh, you know, $5 for an hour of, you know, real Thai training. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And like, that's, that's <laughs> I went in there and, and like, oh my God, this is cool. And then I came back here. I went to this place called Legends and, and started learning there. And, and uh, we went back to Thailand last year. Um, but I never, I never got in there because I had kids, and we just made it all about the kids. We went to Vietnam and Thailand, and just kind of bounced around everywhere. Now you've done, now obviously, you do a lot of fight choreography, choreography stuff yeah. like that. But you mentioned you've uh, done some jujitsu as well. Yeah, a little bit, a little yeah. bit. I actually did a twister on ABC television. Okay, like if you go there, did this movie, no one cared. Like I, <laughs> I was like, I was pitching to the producer, oh, it's gonna be a twister. I'm gonna put the guy in. Crank his neck, yeah, and and I made them do it, but I didn't get the heat that I thought it would get. That, I mean, that's, <laughs> that real talk is that I mean, obviously, like Muay Thai have uh, is probably a lot more as better for choreography for yeah. fighting, right? It's yeah. a lot more dynamic to watch. Yeah. Do you feel like that's an issue with? Uh, I mean, does that kind of dissuade you from wanting to do more jujitsu because it's not very much fun to watch on camera? Uh, jujitsu is a lot harder to learn, I think, mm -hmm. and so uh, I don't know. I I, I do jujitsu a little bit, but I'm not very good. Well, very good. I feel like that's. I feel like most people would sell. Even black belts would tell you the same thing. Yeah, like I do jiu-jitsu. I'm not. No, I'm good. really not good. <laughs> no, I'm really not. I'm, I'm much better stand up. Um, but uh, I love it. I, yeah. I still do it. I think it's great. I think it's uh, it's a uh, great exercise. Uh, cool. I'll yeah. let cool Greg ask questions now. Thank uh, you. All right. Was the impetus to go do boxing initially because of the sobriety was it like you needed to go do something i needed to get uh, i when i was uh when yeah i needed to get in yeah. shape okay i didn't i was it had nothing to do with boxing i just i wasn't the type of guy to go get get on a treadmill and sit there for an hour and go sure, oh, yeah, treadmill, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what i mean i just wasn't doing it um and then uh, there was this gritty little boxing gym in vancouver and uh called griffins um and i just went there and and uh yeah it was it was it was a night it was the first couple months was rough just getting your ass kicked just getting my ass kicked yeah i was you know out of shape and i just partied for like five years straight yeah your body was in a different state than it needed good. to be punching non-stop yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh yeah it was it was good it was good for me good cool greg this is my friend devin sour what question do you have for him what's up bro what's up dude um a couple of months ago i remember my whole timeline blew up because they're saying that they interviewed stan and asked him who he stands right and i read it and one of the or two of the names that stood out to me were eminem and jay-z so yeah. you're a big jay-z guy uh i don't remember saying uh, yeah i am i am yeah of course i'm a oh, big jay-z guy so um, the question did i say jay-z though yeah yeah you said jay-z like, said like kendrick it. lamar you said a, oh, okay a so i gave a list of people Biggie, yeah you said Love a few i guys. saw kendrick at uh the staples center and that guy commands the stage man he was he's Really, really special. Definitely, up um, show. love Jay Z. But uh, I wanted to ask, who do you who do you think is better, Jay Z or Eminem? Oh. Uh, Eminem. Oh, damn. Uh, 
<laughs> cool Greg flees the microphone. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, I love Jay Z. I just think I think Eminem is is uh, is a very talented fella. Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever talk? You keep in touch with him? No. Talk t- no. Christmas card contact? No. no. Just drop a line. No. Get ready for staying two point Still hasn't called or wrote. <laughs> Is that a tired thing you get a lot too? You get a lot of that? <laughs> no. You, no? Okay, really, okay, okay, good. Then it was an original. Okay. No. Barrett Courtney, what do you have to say to Devin? Hello, hello. Hey, what's going um, on? Of course, you're many, in many films uh, going go in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, right? The one that was most important to me growing up, SLC Punk. Right. Um, very great coming of age story. Uh, and then naturally, there's the sequel, uh, Punk's Dead, yeah. uh, that di- happened a couple of years ago. Right. Which so was my- made for no money. <laughs> right. Because yeah. it was all crowdfunded and all right. that. All that good stuff. Yeah. So my question that I've always wondered is, uh, what was it difficult going back to a role after like 18 years? Was there a different mindset? Um, of course, uh, Sean, the character Sean was a. Uh, completely different in the sequel because of all the life changes he yeah. had so was that kind of a difficult going back to that or? It, it wasn't difficult I really wanted to go back to the acid guy yeah. I really <laughs> wanted to go back to that guy but the director felt that I I made some life changes with that character and so it wasn't hard at all because it was it was almost like a, a a brand new, uh, a whole brand new character. I just had to keep in mind that he he has tripped off his ass on all that acid, and so yeah. he's not all there. <laughs> Other than that, it was pretty. We were basically the any of the old characters that came back. Where we were just trying to introduce the world to these new, this new these wave new, of these new punks that yeah. were that were in it. They were the leads of the movie, cool. Machine Gun Kellys, and right, right, yeah. right. And then uh, when you did SLC Punk, what was your reaction like going through the the script and whatnot of looking at the acid trip scene? Were you were you worried about going in there and doing the shots of like the shot of like the knife going into your head and freaking out your mom and all that stuff? Yeah, the director yelled cut on one of those takes and said I needed to. to I remember it. He, he got a little bit upset. It, was, it goes back to like you know you're just fearless and, and yeah. I think I w- it was I was getting such a reaction from the crew and everything because that's all in, all of that was uh, improv and running around the table. And I think at one point it was getting so heightened that it might not have been because it was a real knife. We didn't have Jesus. we didn't have a prop guy for, oh, wow. for a fake knife or anything. But it got a little heightened and he said you need to tone bring, it down, bring it down yeah, before yeah. someone gets hurt. Um, you know you're well, I was eight, 18, 19 years old and I'm fucking on acid and I got a knife and my mother's a goat or bull or whatever. Um, so yeah, awesome. But uh, it was a lot of fun that sh- that shoot. It se- it seemed like a lot of fun, even yeah. though like the scene itself is really intense. Yeah, we're trying to do another movie. He he and I in New York. Uh, um, for for no money, I just I got to work with the guy because he reminds me so much of. Uh, he just disappears. He's a real artist, um, and, and he he. But he's so good, and he's got this this movie that we might do in New York. Another like crowd funded, no money, but just a bunch of artists to get together, do some cool movie. stuff. Yeah, just do something interesting. Awesome. Thank you so much yeah. for answering my questions. Yeah, man. Anytime, Baron. Oh, Nick's back. Oh, okay, he's got more kickboxing. Shout stuff. out to Nikita. I don't know if you guys talked about that or not. We, we did a little bit. That he did it for a long time. Yeah, you love Nikita great. too. Oh my god, Eric Goldman was... came up, of course. We're talking about Nikita. Yeah, dude, that show was like really, really good. Thank you. <laughs> and like seeing you pop up on, I was like, holy shit, dude. He's yeah, awesome. it was fun. You, it was fun. <laughs> there, you know, the, those were the, the, I got to give it up for Nikita too because that when I thought the doors were all closed and I had just come back to Hollywood and yeah. uh, that was the first door that opened. Those guys said, hey. We, well, of course, like, we'd, we'd love to have you. That's and awesome. That was kind of, and then, and then at the end of the series, I was like, oh shit, maybe, maybe, maybe it's not as bad as I thought it was. <laughs> maybe I can did still they, get. Uh, maybe did I they tell still... you how much you were going to have to spend shirtless, tied to a bed, uh, when you first took the role? I didn't really know, but it, <laughs> it, it, I made a joke on Twitter about like the CW's annual post Christmas weigh in, like, um, and it, it really <laughs> is kind of like Are they that. About it? You know, CWs, you know, they like their fellas and. I girls mean, I'm not to gonna be. lie. That cast is probably one of the best looking casts. Yeah, we, of uh, of any CW show I've ever I, seen. I can't do that anymore. I like it's to stay that. To, like, how, how, how what did you weigh when you did that? Because you were big. You put on a lot of muscle for that role. No, that was I was smaller than I am now. Really? But yeah, but it was. was did you look jacked was on camera? Less uh, body fat, um, but I was 34, I think, when I was doing that, mm-hmm. and now I'm like 40. So, I mean, age is changing. It's getting a lot harder. Yeah. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, now I'm trying stupid shit like intermittent fasting. Yeah, and yeah. Stuff, like, what know? can I do to jumpstart you know I mean? like, my oh, metabolism? Oh, God, I just can't get up in the morning. <laughs> awesome. Soon, I'll be, soon I'll be going to one of those like men's health things and getting a little help. <laughs> you get an injection. <laughs> a little injection. Yeah, yeah, that's our God given right. All I'm right, going, get I, out of here. The second I can do it, it, I'm doing TRT. Get out of here with your growth hormones. <laughs> can, I put, can I put TRT on the company credit card? Is that no, possible? Okay. You can't. You're not shirtless enough for that. At all. 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this has been my cool friend, Devin Sal. Devin, thank you so much for coming through. Thanks, a brother. This was I'm awesome to be the first show. Yeah, no, Love of course. It. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think of We Have Cool Friends? God only knows how many episodes we've recorded after this, but before you've seen them. So eventually your feedback will be taken into consideration. <laughs> Let me know on Twitter. Let us know everywhere on Patreon. If you like the show, support us. Patreon.com slash kind of funny. That's where you can be a bronze member and get into the We Have Cool Friends friend zone where you can ask our guests all sorts of cool questions. Uh, Devin, what do you want to promote? Where can people keep up with you? Where should they be looking for you next? God, well, when is this coming out? Six weeks. Six weeks. I, I, I think that uh, Stallone movie is coming out July fourth weekend. Okay. Um, the in the fall is the Moose, the Fred Durst directed with uh, John Travolta. I'm really excited about that one. Um, and I got a movie with Guy Pierce that's just in the can, so we don't know when that's coming out. Probably in the fall. Uh, uh, other than that, yeah, and I just that's that's what I've been doing. Okay. Um, and I'll probably probably be on something by six weeks. I probably I don't know. Okay. Well, follow so, him on Twitter. Just don't yeah, need him on, him on Twitter because he will call you off. Yeah, on Twitter. Dude, I'm gonna Twitter stop more. doing that. Okay. Good. No, no more gonna... hauling drywall or calling people on. Oh, Twitter. now he's too good to haul. <laughs> he's too good to haul drywall. Everybody, I don't know. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, make a new friend today.